I'm Marlene McCormick in the 24-7 Newsroom. No improvement in the nation's first domestic Ebola patient. The latest at 7 on WBAP. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit, Marley. Brian Bufard joins us right now, our legal expert. We turn to when we have questions. And a question came up over the weekend uh, because Thomas Eric Duncan, who has, uh, Marley mentioned, has taken a turn for the worse. Uh, the DA, the district attorney here in Dallas County, Craig Watkins, says he is going to look into whether or not Duncan knowingly and intentionally exposed the public to a deadly virus. And, and Brian, we wanted to get you on because if the investigation shows that Thomas Duncan did do that, what could the charge be then? Hey, Brian, good morning. I think what Craig Watkins is trying to do is analogize this case to other cases where they've had successful prosecutions for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon when you have someone who knows that uh, he or she is HIV positive and then intentionally has unprotected sex with someone and exposes them to that virus. That analogy does not really hold in, in this case, in my opinion. First off, we don't know exactly when Mr. Duncan knew or, or certainly should have known that he was actually infected with Ebola. Uh, My understanding is back in Liberia, he came into contact with a a sick woman who was pregnant. And at the time, her her illness or her malady could have been attributed to something going on with her pregnancy. They would also have to show that an act occurred here in Dallas jurisdiction or even in in American jurisdiction. So I I think it's appropriate for any DA to to assess whether or not charges are appropriate, but I I don't think that that's going to happen in this case. And and not to mention, if you do uh, bring charges and uh, bring him into custody, what are you going to do with him? It's not as if you can take him to the county jail. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's a unique situation. I I honestly think that it's, you know, kind of election time bluster. And and unfortunately, uh, it doesn't appear that Mr. Duncan is going to survive to be charged with anything anyway. So that's that's very sad. Brian Buffard joins us right now. Uh, and Brian, when you when you look at the, there was also another illegal angle in that Liberia had brought up that they may bring charges against him as well, right? Right. And and to me, that seems like it would have more juice to it. In other words, he he filled out forms that would be clearly false. And uh, if that's the case, then yeah, he committed that offense in Liberia. And uh, I think it's a good thing that they would, you know, at least consider prosecuting somebody who who did that. Yeah, and and it's going to be interesting to see if, you know, if you do pursue pursue these here in the United States, is it actually a Dallas County issue, or is there some sort of federal issue that could come up, right? No, I, I think it would be federal. I, I think the only way something like this would be a Dallas County legal issue would be if, for example, uh, today he decided to get up, walk out of his hospital room. He knows he has Ebola, and they've told him to stay put, but he gets up and walks out and, and comes into contact with people. You know, at that point, I think you've got a, a crime that arguably has been committed, and clearly it would have been committed in Dallas. Well, well, then, Brian, does that apply to the family members who were quarantined but left? You know, it depends on what they knew. you got to figure if you're being quarantined, they're certainly telling you you've at least been exposed to this disease, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have it. So. Breaking a quarantine, you know, is certainly a you know serious business, and I think that that would get you a lot closer to looking at a crime that may have been committed here. And I don't mean to put you on the spot here, but I, I think I heard over the weekend when they were looking for the homeless gentleman who was in the ambulance after Duncan mm-hmm. that, that a search warrant had been issued. Is that right? Did I did I hear that phrase used to find him? You know, I, I haven't heard that, but I don't know why they would need a search warrant to look for a citizen. That okay. that seems a little off to me. Yeah, that that, that didn't seem right. Uh, Brian Pufar, by the way, you can follow or uh, you can you can uh, find out more about his uh, services at. Uh, BoufardLaw.com. That's the uh, website. B-O-U-F-F-A-R-D-Law.com. Thanks, Brian, for the time this morning.